first of all, recognize that the production here in the United States is expected to surpass Saudi Arabia by the end of the year. And that, that is significant. We are now truly a global oil producer. You mentioned the, the LNG and the opportunities that we have for export to Asia, China, uh, other, other nations there. It is significant insofar as our ability to take what we have, uh, what we have been allowed to, to, to bring to fruition through this, really, this shale renaissance, this right. ability to tap into the Permian and then move that to, to nations around the globe, particularly in Asia, where there is great interest in, in our natural gas. Are U.S. consumers benefiting from all of this? How much of this product that we're talking about is going overseas to other markets? How much of it because of issues with pipelines, transportation, the correct kind of facilities? I'm thinking even about how a lot of our refiners are set up to, for the heavy crude that we import from places like Venezuela. You know, what more could be done so that the U.S. consumer really reaps the benefit of all this? Well, keep in mind that when we increase our production, that's more jobs here, that's more into our local economy, so that's good there as well. It's also good from a balance of trade perspective that we're able to export, but you speak to a capacity restraint that is very, very real here in this country, in the lower 48, particularly in the Northeast, where you're not able to enjoy the benefits of that lower cost gas if you can't get it to your state. These are issues that we need to reconcile working with the Energy Regulatory Commission, working through the Congress, but capacity and infrastructure is going to be key for us as we, as we capitalize on our energy potential. The, the inability to get it to your state, as you point out, is one thing, but the unwillingness of certain states in the Northeast, New York among them, to sanction fracking is another. Uh, and it goes to the heart of the critics of the fracking boom who say that there's a tremendous amount of water that is being, has to be used to produce this gas, that the groundwater can be contaminated by it, and what do you do with the wastewater at the end of it, and that these are all legitimate environmental risks that we need to get right to protect the environment. Some people think we are. Some people think we're not. What do you say, and are we hitting the right balance? Well, I will tell you that what we are seeing around the country as we are, are going after this shale gas using frac fracking technology, and keep in mind, is different in different parts of the country. You've, you've got different geology. And so making sure that we, quote, get it right is often going to depend on, on where you are. But I will suggest to you that the technologies that we're seeing now being utilized in this country that are allowing us to access this are... Ten years ago, we could not have dreamed that we would be in this place, that we are able to export to the level that we are because of these vast quantities that come to us. So it's our technologies that have got us here, and it is our technologies that will allow us to ensure that from an environmental perspective, from a water perspective, that we are doing it right and we're doing it soundly. Senator Murkowski, just a couple of days ago, you penned an op-ed along with Democratic Senator Joe Manchin. Um, basically saying that as long as you're in the Senate, you would support the U.S.'s move away from a gre uh, greenhouse gas emissions, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And you sort of swiped at the Green New Deal without actually mentioning the Green New Deal. You said that there are some measures that are being put forth that are drastic and they're not passable. At the same time, you didn't put forth any of your own specific proposals. So is there a, a realistic Green Deal uh, to be coming that you will co-sponsor in some way? What, what I am working towards and working aggressively towards within the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, along with my ranking member, is we want to get to those pragmatic, honest solutions that are going to make a difference to reducing our emissions in this country so that we get to that goal that we want to achieve, which is the environmental balance, if you will, but moving towards, towards an economy that is strong while at the same time we're being the environmental stewards that I think everyone wants us to be. So we are working on building out those technologies, whether it's carbon capture, 
uh, and utilization, whether it is a focus on storage, whether it is uh, advances in our renewables, whether it's advances in the technologies that are allowing us to go after our extractive resources. This is the direction that will actually get your results. I'm not interested in messaging votes about where you are or where you aren't. We are here, we are in the present, we have to deal with our environmental challenges, we have to make sure that we're a strong economy, and we can do this, but we gotta tone down the rhetoric. We, you can come to the Energy and Natural Resources Committee in the Senate for one of those good dialogues and, and honest debates about where and how we move forward.